This is the 2021 Bronco Sport. Now there are four different versions. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the first edition. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time to the channel, we do a lot more than very cool car reviews. We give you first looks of new vehicles and we give you information so that you can have car smarts because we believe knowledge is power. Make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. This is the 2021 Bronco Sport. Now there are four versions, there's a Big Bend and there's the Outer Banks. That's in a totally separate review, which you can check out up here. What you also should know is that the bigger engine, which is what we have here, is available in the first edition and the Badlands. So we have the top of the line luxury. This vehicle seats five people, but it's a real off-road vehicle and it goes head to head with Jeep. We're gonna give you information in 10 categories because when you go to the dealer, they're gonna sell you on the vehicle. I'm going to give you information so that you have car smarts. We're going to cover performance, handling, safety, visibility, seating, technology, features. We're also going to cover cargo space, design, and quality, and value. And in the end, we'll give you a Car Coach Reports rating so you can compare it to the other vehicles in this category, which pretty much is the Jeep category. Or if you've got a lot of money, you're looking at that Land Rover Defender, and we've reviewed that. You can check that out up here. Let's go for a drive. Under the hood of the Bronco are two engine options. Now, it depends on the model that you buy. If you buy the Outer Banks or the base entry level Bronco, you're going to get that 1.5 liter turbo engine. We talked about that in a different review, and you'll have to check that one out. But this is the first edition or the Badlands. It comes with a two liter engine, 245 horsepower, 275 pound feet of torque. What you should know is every single Bronco Sport has all wheel drive. And when you buy the upper two trims, the Badlands in the first edition, you get additional improvements or enhancements as they call it on the four wheel drive system. The performance on the first edition and the Badlands is different than that of the Outer Banks and the entry level version. And the reason for that is it's a different engine. This is a two liter turbocharged engine with 245 horsepower, but 275 pound feet of torque. That's a lot. And the difference is dramatic. And you'll see when I do a zero to 60 in the Outer Banks, and here we are at a traffic light, I'm gonna hit the gas. I want you to see the difference in the pickup. Now, currently, this is just in normal mode. You turn this little dial. I'm just gonna do normal mode, and you'll see the difference is quite a bit different. Yes, there's more engine, but what you're also getting is more torque. This is all wheel drive all the time. It's standard, you can't get two wheel drive, but you also have the ability to do more with this vehicle, and part of that has to do with handling, and we'll talk about that in a minute but performance overall is towing capacity is around 2,200 pounds. This isn't towing big time, but look at that. That's in normal mode. I was pretty impressed. And the reason for that is it's about the get up and go. Now you buy horsepower, but you drive torque. But I've owned Broncos before, and this drives like an original Bronco. So if you've owned a Bronco in the past, you're not gonna be disappointed with this. Now we're gonna try this again at this light, but we're gonna do it in sport mode. So we're gonna go down to this little goat dial, which means goes on all terrain. We're gonna turn that dial to the right to, next one's eco, then sport. Here we go, in sport. Shift points are higher, nice torque. You're really getting the performance out of this. Now, if you're going off road, you're not gonna use any of that because that's not what this is about. Now, if you go down to the eco mode, which is one dial to the left on the goat mode, you'll suddenly see that it changes all the RPMs. Yes, it's about fuel economy. So you can test all the different modes. Now, we do have snow here in the Buffalo area, which is really good for testing this vehicle. And you can tell there's a difference when this vehicle is a real four wheel drive where you can shift the torque to each corner as needed. And that's part of what makes this a really cool vehicle, but that's part of handling but this is performance. Fuel economy on this two liter is 25 miles to the gallon in the city, 28 in the highway, and when it comes to performance, this is really impressive. It earns a nine. There is start-stop technology on this vehicle, and you can shut that off in a button right here underneath the center screen, because that's the first thing I like to shut off, because you're only saving about a tablespoon of fuel. I know they're doing it for fuel economy, but it's ridiculous. So when you're looking at handling for this vehicle, as far as starting with the normal daily driving in a normal mode, which is the mode we're in, it's pretty comfortable. We just went over a little bump. You don't even feel it. So I think they did a really nice job as far as ride comfort, because typically when you get into a Jeep or something of similar comparable to this 
Bronco Sport, it's a rough ride. That's one thing I didn't like about the Gladiator, and we reviewed that. You can check that out up here. But as far as this vehicle, as far as like daily driving it, normal mode, this could easily be a daily driver. There is certainly not going to deter you from owning it for something of just everyday use. Now, when you move it over the next dial to sport mode, it really doesn't change that much of the handling on regular roadways. I mean, you're just looking at changing lanes. It's not gonna be a sports car. It's not a Mustang, let's put it that way. But when you move to the off-road modes, that's when things change. There's a slippery mode, which is cool, which we have ice here, typically. Then going back to the left, your modes go slippery, then to sport, then to eco. Do you feel that pickup going? That's normal. And then the next mode is mud and ruts. Now that is only on the higher two trim levels, the Badlands and the first edition. It is not available on the outer banks and the entry level. Then you can go to the next mode to the left after mud and ruts is sand, which I think is pretty cool. And then there's a rock crawl mode. Now rock crawling in this thing would be a blast. And we're gonna try and do that at a later time because I don't have rock crawling around this area where I am. I wish I did, that'd be so much fun. And if you haven't done that before, that's about slow speeds. And I'm gonna put it back into the normal mode because we're driving on normal roads. The brakes are nice, they're firm, they're certainly not anything that's gushy and they're specific which i think is important when you're driving a truck or an suv or in this case and there's a jeep right next to me he's looking over at this vehicle going what is that yeah it's a bronco sport pretty cool as far as handling for this vehicle the goat mode means goes on all terrain these extra two things that you get the mud and rut ruts and the, the off-road mode for rock crawling are only like i said on the upper two trim levels Overall, when you're talking about the steering of this vehicle, it can get sloppy at times. It's almost over assisted for the street. And I think that was designed for people to drive it every day. So if you're used to a Jeep and that more rough, very um, uncomfortable maybe ride for the steering input, that's partly because of the way their steering is designed versus the steering on this vehicle. This is really a neat. This vehicle also has trail control. Now for its everyday driving through snow, through the icy roads that we have here in Buffalo and the heavy snow, this vehicle earns an eight. Safety is a huge component of any vehicle that you buy. And I'm constantly talking about how important it is and you always wanna have the most safety you can get. So Ford has included the Copilot 360, which has Ford collision warning, of course, it's a backup camera that's been standard since like 2008. Of course, there are airbags and seatbelts. Those are passive safety features. In addition, there is a rear sensing system. So when you're driving on the road, the Ford collision warning is important because there are some bad drivers on the road. And there's one right here in front of me now. They jarred in and out of traffic and the guy slams on the brakes. This vehicle will intervene and hit the brakes. That's the Ford collision warning. You've also got the active cruise control and there's a whole suite of safety features on the Copilot 360. So part of safety is included in the handling, believe it or not. So it has like vector control. So when you get into a corner, so you don't go in too fast, the handling will compensate with the safety systems. You all start to merge together to make it better for you to drive because you've got a pretty short but tall vehicle. Same problem that Jeep has. When you have a tall vehicle like this, just like with the Jeep, the safety features are very beneficial on the street. Off road, when you go into those modes that we were talking about, those goat modes goes on all terrain and it changes, you also get the camera that tells you what's going on around you, especially when you're in rock crawl mode, you wanna know what's going on around you. Besides the pre-collision warnings that are in this vehicle, they've really thought about safety in a vehicle like this. It's a family vehicle, but it's also an off-road vehicle. It's a camping vehicle. It's pretty much everything. So for safety, this vehicle earns an eight. When you look out the front, you've got a pretty good sized hood. You can see the ground and the glass is reasonably sized. The sills are a little bit higher than you would expect. When you look out the back, you can see it's kind of limited because of the style and design of this vehicle. And there's also a little Easter egg. Easter eggs are little logos of the Bronco all around the vehicle. Not the Bronco logo, but an actual little picture of the car. There's one right there out the back. And I'll show that to you when we go around for design because I think it's pretty cool. When it comes to visibility for this vehicle, there are some minimal restrictions, but overall it earns a seven. When it comes to seating, it's about where you sit right here. Although a lot of people think it's not that important, it is because 
This is where you make the decisions. This is what you're driving the vehicle. It may look totally awesome on the outside, but this driver's seat is critical, and so is that passenger seat. Now, what's also important to note, that the driver's seat is an eight-way power seat, and that includes lumbar, and that's on the driver's side. On the passenger side, it is a six-way power seat, no lumbar. And these seats don't have a lot of support, which I'm kind of surprised. They only come in one interior color, by the way, and that's called denim. And that's what you're looking at here, the gray and the blue. And that's cool. It's very cool. But as far as materials and comfort, it seems sort of flat. Like there's not a lot of great support. And laterally, these bolsters that are on the side aren't bad. But depending upon how you're built, this may be comfortable or not comfortable. So it's really important that you sit in the seat and see if you can adjust it. Here's a tip. You want to be 12 inches from that center of that airbag where that Bronco is to the center of your chest. You do not want to be closer. So if you cannot adjust the seat to meet your size and adjustments, this is not the vehicle for you. You need to find something that fits you for however you're built. Another thing to note is the adjustable height seat belts. So right here, this adjusts the seat belt so it doesn't cut your neck. So you want to adjust that. Not every vehicle has it. This vehicle does, and I think that was really helpful. Let's take a look at the second row. Now here in the second row, there's a couple of things to note. First thing you'll note is this roof curves up. And it, you can see it right here. There's that like lip. This is great. I'm 5'8". You could be 6'5 if you're all torso. Not a problem. As far as legroom, again, this is set for me and there's tons of knee room. So really great when it comes to the back seat. Now, one of the things you should know, it's a 60-40 split rear seat. And when you pull down this center console, there's just two cup holders, no pass through. That's fine when you're looking at the price point that you're in. In addition, when you buy the Badlands, which this is not, this is a first edition. If you buy the Badlands, one of the seats lifts up and has a locking compartment. Not available in this vehicle. This vehicle is fully loaded. It's important to note that. And then in addition, you've got these backpacks. Same thing as in all the Broncos. Really cool place to put things. I can just see kids leaving crap in here. So keep that in mind. Also, the side of the seats have spots for water bottles. I don't know if that's going to be an inconvenience depending upon what you have, but at least you know there's a place to put things. Behind the center console, you've got two vents, and then you've got just an outlet here for a regular wall outlet. So that's good as well because everyone's got to be charging all the time. In the doors, you've got your Bang & Olufsen speaker, just one little speaker. All these mixed materials here is really, we'll talk about it in quality, but when you're looking in the door, you've got more storage as well. When you're looking at seating overall, this is kind of a flat seating and not necessarily that comfortable with tons of room. If you've got bigger people, two bigger people, great. If you've got car seats, you can seat three, but car seats, you only get two back here because there's only two latch systems. So keep that in mind, depending upon your family situation and who you're moving around. When it comes to seating overall, this Bronco Sport in the first edition earns a five. Look at that. Inside the vehicle when you get in, there's a nice little presentation. Isn't that cool? In all the center screens. And then right here in the middle, they also give you a little presentation. Part of the cool technology. Now, you don't use this every day. It's just a nice invitation. But some of the technology has nothing really to do with the gauges. Let me start this vehicle up. More presentation here. What you're looking at here is an eight inch screen with SYNC 3. This is not the state of the art SYNC 4 system, but it has everything you need. You've got your audio system, with, which is AM and there's FM. Of course, you got all your different sources here. You can do your Sirius XM and your Bluetooth, which is all great. Uh, in addition, you can do your phone connection, nothing unusual, standard Bluetooth. You've got your apps, which you can do through the Ford app. And then of course, all of your settings. Pretty standard stuff. You get your driver assistance. This is all part of that safety, but you can actually see what everything is. Like, what is this lane keeping alert? And the, you can hit that. It'll give you the different modes. The sensitivity is adjustable. All this is part of the technology. Now, one of the things I like is you can press information and it'll show you. This is something new that Ford is doing. I'm not seeing this with any other brands. It is super smart. It explains the pre-collision warning. Now, also, same thing, lane keep assist. People want to know, what am I turning on and off? Well, there it is. It shows you exactly what it is. I think it's genius. They also have that in the Mach-E. 
So this is the rear view camera. You press the information and it tells you that it automatically turns on when the car is in reverse. Pretty simple stuff, right? Blind spot detection. This is great. It shows you when something's in the blind spot, you get a visual warning right here. Really nice to explain it because you know what? You don't remember what the dealer told you when you were there. This is trailer sway. Now this reduces the sway on the trailers. I'll tell you what, if you've ever had what we call the tail wagging the dog, you'll be really glad that this technology is in the car. Again, this is part of handling as well. Cross traffic alert. If you're backing up, this vehicle has it. Tells you something's going on. I think I missed one there, that park aid. That just tells you if you're backing up, you need some help. Remember, Ford is the first to have perpendicular and parallel park, believe it or not, way back when. So it can do that for you as well if you don't know how to do that. And then you got your driver alert right there. And that just says notifies you if you're not paying attention. So there's something watching your eyes. Again, that's part of technology. I just really wish, though, when you look at all these cool things, that this vehicle has the Ford, there's the Ford Connect. That's part of you know the ability to connect to your phone and everything get your mobile apps android auto apple carplay wi-fi is standard which is great and then you got your general settings and then your display you can customize that as you wish voice controls and valet nothing that's that unusual i will tell you that this is kind of an outdated system and it's kind of disappointing because it's so much cool stuff in this car and they did so much to make this a bronco that I wish it had a little bit more, but for technology, this vehicle compared to the Uconnect system, which is in Jeep, which is pretty impressive, this vehicle earns an eight. When you're looking at features, they call this a Bronco. They do not call this a Ford product. And there's only one spot on the vehicle where you see Ford. And you go forward to the gauges, you can see pretty standard gauges. You're not gonna see anything that you have not seen before. You can do your display setup. You can do all kinds of resets. You can adjust what you wanna see in front of you. This is not that unusual. The nice thing with this though is if you go off road, this shows you right now I'm obviously level, but as you go off road, you're gonna to wanna to have that. And also it's got all the adjustments. So as you go to the different off road modes, and this is the normal, when you go into mud and ruts, notice it's in four wheel lock and you'll notice that it is a lower setting. So it's, it's changing a lot of the characteristics of this vehicle. That is part of technology, which we talk about. It's part of handling. There's a lot of different features. I love the different different settings. I think they did such a great job. This was uh, very much seen originally when it came to the Lincoln. When it comes to the gauges themselves, nothing unusual. You've got your normal stocks here for your wipers, front and rear. You've got your headlights right here. And also there is a little thing right there for the lane departure warning. Good to know. You've got minus and plus. I, you would use this when you're doing off-roading. Uh, I've done some off-roading and you can check that out at some of the videos that we have on our site. And this is what's on the right side of the steering wheel you got your phone connections your voice and changing some things in front of you and then over here you've got of course the audio system and your cruise control uh, on the left side you've got the normal hatch lights nothing unusual there's no memory seating even in this luxury first edition however there is power mirrors power windows and power locks now this vehicle has bang and olufsen audio which is also cool when it comes to features. One of the features I love, and I wish every vehicle had it, is the ability right here to shut off the active start stop. So, like I said, saves about a tablespoon. And then you've got all your regular controls here. So this is something we all know about audio and so forth. And then the cameras, you press the camera mode, you can see what's going on behind me. It's really windy out today. So I'm trying to shelter myself from the wind. As we go here onto this shelf, nice, put junk. This is a junk collection place. I like that personally, because I, I, we always have stuff, whether it's your wallet or whatever, your lunch or whatever it might be. Further down, you got your just notification of passengers, your regular everyday, yes, I'm used to seeing this, right? Everybody has heated seats. You got three stage heated seats, nice. And then also the heated steering wheel, which is important. Now there is no ventilated seats on this vehicle, so that's something that you would have to get used to. Further down, you've got USB-C, you've got USB and a 12 volt outlet. This is a phone here on the wireless charger. And then of course, another place to store some junk and check out that key. Can you see that? Check out that key. It just says Bronco. Just remind, it doesn't say Ford, it says Bronco. And on the other side, it's just a normal, if you owned a truck before or escape, whatever, just normal stuff. All right, going further down, you'll see that we've got your regular controls. This is your Prindle. Instead of it being a lever, this is what they're doing now. And then you've got your cup holders. And uh, I don't know what the heck that's for. Stuff, candy bar or whatever. Uh, that's parking brake. That is your uh, auto hold if you're sitting at a traffic light. 
and then we go into this is your off-roading mode it's for the mud and ruts and slowing it down you got shutting off your traction control and this is for setting the lock and four-wheel lock and then there's your goat modes all the different modes now when you go and looking at this vehicle overall it is designed of different materials i mean just soft materials mixed with hard materials it's it's an interesting mix i'm not sure what the mindset was on mixing it this much i mean even when you're talking about the seats you're looking at like soft and then vinyl or leather it, maybe it's pleather plastic leather i call it i do like the bronco floor mats those are kind of cool bronco sport waiting for the big bronco and then of course there's their back seat now in addition you've got storage here and then of course storage behind the seats and then in the center console you've got more outlets and a big center console when you're looking at features overall for this vehicle i'm kind of disappointed in the sync 3 system i wish it had sync 4 i wish it had all the goodies i do love all those easter eggs all over the car and those are those little bronco logos you have to look for i've only found a few i think there's like three or four but i will continue to look for them and i'll let you know when it comes to ratings for features this bronco sport in the first edition earns an eight the Bronco's design is quite boxy, like the Bronco 2, if you remember that. We've all seen those on the road. They were kind of boxy, and then the full-size Bronco, which is from the past. So they wanted to carry that heritage along. The first thing you'll note is the big Bronco in the front. There's no Ford logo, which is really interesting. There's very few. Actually, there's only one Ford logo on the whole vehicle. You'll also note that the headlights are really cool-looking, very boxy design. And this hood is very muscular. It looks like I'm an off-road vehicle, but it does have the optional decal package and each trim level has its own packages available so you want to take a look at this again this is the first edition this is the more luxury but it's still really cool and off-roadable versus the badlands the outer banks or the big ben version now we're coming down here to the front this is a little bit glossy which is a nice offset you've got your camera here in the front which you're going to use for off-road and your round view camera and then this is matte top and bottom the top is not functional the bottom is actually the radiator and then this is also part of cooling and then down here you get your tow hooks very aggressive this is great this vehicle is covered in dirt and I left it that way to show you the difference between the shiny and the and the flat the flat doesn't show the dirt as bad as the shiny does although you can see the dirt but the idea is that these LED headlights really do the job and the windshield is much square and more upright than most vehicles. You'll also notice in the front these cool driving lights. A little different, but that's part of the look of the Bronco Sport. It wants to be different and stand out in the crowd, and it does that. Going further back, these 17-inch wheels are really cool. An aggressive all-season tire. If you're going to do some rock crawling and all that, you want to look for specific tires, but most people aren't. They want to maybe go camping or go to the beach. You can do that in this vehicle. If you live in Florida or any place you can drive on the beach, this would be a blast. I do like the protection here for the fenders. And then, of course, that vent, it's a style point. It is not functional. Matte mirrors this is great. And then it gets shiny on the top. One thing to note is as you go further down on this shiny roof with this roof rack that has tie downs available to it, again, it's matte. There's a mixture of gloss and matte throughout the vehicle. There's a mixture of materials. We'll talk about that in quality. But when you're looking at this, this is a really wise design. They put a bump in here. So no matter how tall you are, you're in child safety seats, whatever, no one's going to be hitting the roof. It is quite a big space like we talked about in seating. And so that was part of the design. It also gives you more cargo space, but it also lines this up so that now you can put a container on the top, your camping equipment. You can even buy a camper that goes on top of this. So if you want to put a tent up there, that'd be kind of neat. Also note that the vehicle is marked with the first edition, so each vehicle of the model trim is here to remind you that decal package as you work your way back. One thing that Ford has that not everybody has are these numbers. So you, if you don't want to take your key with you, that's fine. You can use the key code to get in or just use the key fob. So it's a really smart idea. Ford's been doing it for years and years and years. So as you go further back, this is the normal four-door setup, and then you've got the trim pieces here. I will tell you that there's a regular Bronco coming. Everybody knows about it. It's bigger. It's going to be amazing because it's going to be a real off-road vehicle, and that'll be available in two-door and four-door. Now going further back, you've got, again, this gloss mixed with the dark glass and a very muscular, beefy-looking quarter panel. You can see the LED tail lights. They're neat and they're big and they're bold and they're in your face, which is great. Third brake light is up top. And then there's this little teeny wiper blade that's here to clean up a little area. 
There's some really neat things on this vehicle. First off, this is the only Ford logo in the entire vehicle. So they really want to make Bronco its own brand. Kind of interesting. That's what Ram did with their trucks. We'll see what happens there. We don't know what they're planning. The Bronco Sport across the back, very cool, very classy, not too much in your face. But if you go further down here, this says glass and that says door. So when you hit this button, you can just open the glass, just like the old Bronco and Bronco Sports have. If that doesn't work for you and you need to open the whole trunk, then you hit that door and the door opens. So it's a big door, I will tell you. But there's again, more mixed materials in here because people are actually using these vehicles. They're not just driving them, they're using them off-road, on-road, and for life. Some additional features include the smat bumper and a class two hitch is standard. And they, they've really done a nice job keeping it clean. And when it comes to design, this vehicle is really cool looking. It deserves a nine. Quality is an important part of any vehicle and the build quality for this Ford Bronco Sport is excellent built here in the US. That's not where I have an issue. Where I have an issue is some of these mixed materials. On the exterior, the flat and the shiny, excellent, well done. But on the interior, some of the materials are very unusual. There's a mixture of like a recycled material with a leather or a pleather, depending upon which trim level you have. Throughout this vehicle, there's some little teeny things that I think can be improved, but hey, this is the first edition and they did a great job when it comes to quality overall it's excellent it earns a nine coming around to the back we got about 32.5 cubic feet of storage with the second row up put that second row down you're around 65 cubic feet of storage this was designed for two mountain bikes so they will easily fit in here also you could camp in here you got all your gear that goes back here but there's a lot of other neat things first thing on the inside you got a 12 volt and a 110 outlet on this side and all kinds of unique hooks for tying things down or for bags or things that you want to keep out of the way or not fall over. You also have on this side a light that is the light that's up here that is adjustable. So once that light is on, you can turn that how you want, especially at night when you're working in the, in the back of the truck. Makes a lot of sense. So well thought out from that perspective. Also note that the there is a Bronco logo, again, another one of those little Easter eggs, that's on this light here in the trunk. Underneath this cover, is a full size spare tire, which I appreciate because if something happens off road, you're not going to want to call for help. You should know how to change a flat tire. Also, there's a funnel back here, which I think is a nice little thing to have if you ever got to add gas and you're out in the middle of nowhere, if you're doing some really serious off road camping. When you're looking at the back of this and you're looking at value and how this compares to the RAV4 and the Jeep, because they're both direct competitors in this category, and there's other vehicles, the Defender and so forth, but the main competitors are Jeep and RAV4, which are very, very big selling cars. So I think that Ford wants to get the biggest piece of this pie as they can. The Bronco starts on the smaller engines around $28,000, and this one came in at $38,160. Pretty well loaded too. The total value of this vehicle is a nine. When you look at all 10 categories of the Bronco Sport compared to its competitors in this class, you can see that it has really good performance. There's a few lacking areas. The seats don't have the adjustments they should have. The older sync system, which doesn't make sense. I'm sure you're gonna see the upgraded version in the full size Bronco, but I think this is something that should be easy to add. And I don't know why they didn't do it, but that sort of brought the score down just a little bit. I like a lot of things about this car and I think they've really thought about how you're going to use it. I suggest you take one for a test drive before you make a final decision. Also test the RAV4, which we've reviewed. There's a link down below to the other reviews as well as the different Jeeps. And there's a lot of different combinations of whether you want a Gladiator or you're stepping up into a whole nother area. So one of the things to think about in this vehicle as a daily driver, how does it rank? It has a total car coach reports total of an 80. There's a lot more information on this vehicle than we had time to cover today. If you have questions and I didn't cover something you have specifically, put that in the comments below. I will get you an answer. I think you should do a deep dive into this vehicle before you make your final decision. There really is a lot of neat things to look at. In this particular edition, there's only five exterior colors and one interior color. And so those are some of the things that you might want to look at a different trim level. So remember to test drive both the smaller and the bigger engine. I prefer the two liter. We did review the outer banks, the smaller engine. I 
personally thought it was underpowered. But again, this is something that you have to decide because this is the vehicle that you're going to own. We reviewed all those vehicles on our website and more at carcoachreports.com. In English, Spanish, we have a lot of other contributors if you're looking for other opinions. Of course, we're always putting out new information when that Bronco comes out and some other cool stuff. That'll be on my social media. That's all platforms at Lauren Fix. And also, we discuss this and more on our podcast, Total Car Score. It's on all platforms. If you like vehicles, you will love our podcast. If you got value from this video, make sure to give it a like and share it with your friends because we want more people to know about the Bronco Sport. Thank you so much for watching and we'll talk to you next time.